All right. Hello and welcome everyone to everyone to a new Fleet Ops audio commentary. This is Triptych and I am really excited to do this. It has been over a month since my last replay and things are also really heating up on the forums as we start to talk about getting a new patch here that's going to change everything. So, today we have a 3 versus 3 on rain. I have not seen or played on this map for a while. And unfortunately, I don't have a piece of paper to write down everybody's names, so I'm going to try to remember this. So, on the top team, we have Warp Core as Federations. His teammate in the middle is going to be Spretz. And on the right, we have the Tiger. So, Spretz is another Federation, and the Tiger, I think, is usually Borg, so it'll take me a second to. No, he's Klingon. Never mind. He is Martok Klingon. Okay, so. We do have a double feds up there. Down on the bottom we have um, Beef, Arshea, and Tempest. And let's see, Beef is Dominion. I suspect Breen, but I don't know for sure. Arshea is Federation. And Tempest usually plays Klingon. He is Martok. And I just want to say real quick, I'm really excited to see Tempest here because I haven't seen you dude in like a year. And that's that's the thing I like about this community is we have like at least two dozen players who have played before and just sort of, you know, they went away for a while, they got tired of it, but they come back. And so I'm really glad to see him come back. Last night I watched three, no, two, three in a row where he was going in a two versus two and just annihilating every single game. Unfortunately, I just reinstalled my computer and my fraps was not working, so I couldn't record them. So yeah, He's been slowly dominating the circuit. It's going to be fun to see that happen again. Now as for the map structure, it looks like the left and right wing players both have expansions towards the center player, while the center player has to go forward, which is an interesting setup. I know sometimes you get confused if the center player tries to take one of these side ones, it can really screw over his teammates. But it does make it so the, the expansions are kind of easy to access like defensively. So, um, this one over here, oh, who was this? Not the Tiger. I want to say Spretz. No, this is Warp Core. Okay, so Warp Core is getting his Antares in chassis level one. Spretz, same deal. Uh, oh, he may have already gotten it. Or, no, never mind. He's looking to get his forward yard. Oh, I hope you got chassis level one there. And it looks like um, Arshea is losing his scout there. Oh, just barely survived. Over here, the tiger, he's getting a single Kaduge and some Kabej, which is a good setup against a uh, fed player. I don't know how useful it will be going against Tempest Klingons. Tempest is getting his Kabej, and I suspect a forward yard. Wow, oh yeah, forward battle yard. So there is also a row of expansions. There's on the left and right, there's a pair, a pair of pairs. And then the middle just sort of has a weird setup. I mean, there's this, that's sort of a pair. They're really far away though. And then this one has a pair. Well, there's, you see there's two dilithium and one tritanium, two dilithium, one tritanium. So I like it when you actually get one person go there and someone from the other team go up here and then you have really close fighting. But, yeah, one of the advantages of Klingon playstyle, uh, Tempest is a very economic Klingon. He builds the fleet slowly and meticulously, and just Klingon rolls people in ways they aren't expecting. So he is not even worrying about the side expansion. That's actually freed up if Arshea wants to take it, or if Tempest wants to get two expansions later. He is, as you can see, he's not really building much, like he isn't, he's being very careful not to overextend himself with extra miners. Normally you'd want to build extra miners and start sending them down here, but he knows that that would delay his production and he's got to get his first couple Sang and Kabej. And that's the thing is, the older players like, like Tempest, they know how to, normally the economic builds slow you down and leave you vulnerable. They know the art of doing an economic build without being vulnerable. So over here, the tiger is, he's sending out his workers. It might take him a second to find that tritanium because it's in such a weird place. In the middle, um, I really want to say spreads. 
Yay! In the middle, Spretz is getting his Starfleet science. So he is looking for... He's Yeah, he does have Chassis the One. He's looking for a relatively early warp in, which on a map of this size, a lot of the older maps are pretty big. So that's really going to help out. Warp ins just give him incredible flexibility. And I hear Dominion attacking somebody. Okay, Beef is going for Warp Core's expand. Well, no, this is his home. Warp Core is going for a heavy. Oh, wow. That is interesting. So it isn't the center expansion, but it is a forward moon. And with that platform, he'll be able to hold that. These bugs. Yeah, bugs lose to intrepids. It isn't a violent loss, it's just sort of a you can't kill it at all. Oh, so this is a Risner Federation over here, so Warp Corps may be looking for some Irati Yard ships. Also, that means his intrepids aren't as ridiculously defensive, but they do have a lot more punch to them. <laughs> that constructor's underneath the science. These bugs are going to harass this force this to upgrade, but they're not going to kill anything. Run away! Over here, so this is also a Risner. Oh, I was going to say, you get some interesting effects when you have Mason and Risner feds together, because they can both send in a fleet of Intrepids, or Monsoons, and the Risner ones will all be targeted before the Mason ones. It's very frustrating slash interesting. You want your higher skill level player to be the Risner one, because he'll be able to get his guys out. Okay, so over here, um, the Tiger is really loading up on his economy. I expect a forward yard. No, no, he's just getting his troops up. Oh, I see. I wonder if this is just a repair yard or actually mining. But now let's go pay attention to these people. So Beef is getting some S2s after his initial bugs. Uh, that's that's one of those things. Going straight into S2s can be a bit risky sometimes, but on a map this big, he probably could have afforded it. Still, these bugs are nice. They're fun. Um, he does have his two yards pumping, and I think he's expanding well. Um, people consider Dominion to really like having close moon pairs, because their miners are so slow, but they have hit points. So if you have two moons that are right next to each other, they can defend them quite well with only one repair yard. However, this map does not have any really close pairs for them to mess with. And over here, um, Arshea. And yeah, Arshea is another exciting player to watch because I saw him you know, two, three months ago, and I saw his very first games and I recorded some of them when he was brand new. And he's definitely picking it up since then. He is Mason Feds. And here we see he's about to get ganged up on pretty badly. Oh, he doesn't realize it. Oh, he's pursuing his monsoons are faster than his intrepids, but he needs to pull back. Oh, the tiger, there it goes. Now he sees it. Arshea needs to get back. This is a great chance for Beef to come in here and help whack some stuff. Or go raiding, we'll see, we'll see. Oh, whose warpin is this? Is this Arshea's? I don't think it's Arshea's. This is Spretz's warp in. Oh, that is bad. This platform may not go up. Oh. Arshea is getting hammered here. Oh, is it? I don't think it's going to go up. Yeah, he cancels. Now Beef can come in and help a little bit. But this might not be enough. Now also, okay, this is actually very interesting. Right now, um, Warp Core needs to get in there. He doesn't have too much. Oh, he's going for his Starfleet Command, but it's not going to be ready in time. This is going to be interesting, because Arshea is taking a hit, but both Beef and Tempest are responding quickly. And they're getting in here, and they are going to kill everything. This top fleet is going to, it's going to get triple teamed. Although, ah, they are doing some nasty damage to these bugs, but like this dude, this dude isn't going to get away. Because he's going to try to retreat over here. In completely unrelated news... I wonder how my audio settings are going. Because I did increase my mic volume so that I'd be able to talk over all these people and not get drowned out. I really hope that's working. There, you see? Yeah, Tempest gets the kill. And he's going to come in here. And Harshea! He didn't get his warpins, but he has pumped out these monsoons. 
and as soon as he gets science and proximity torpedo, their damage will go up even more. So the Arshea just has so many hit points on the field. Here comes Warp Core. He only had three ships, but he knew he had to send them. So that will be useful. Tempest is shelling. Tempest very good at killing these uh, medium and large ships with the Sangs. Oh, it's, it's very risky. The Tiger is trying to cloak out. He's gonna get... he's gonna cloak out pretty well here. And now... oh man, everybody's doing such a good job of microing. Everybody's shooting and nothing's dying. Somebody needs to focus fire. That took some shots. That Intrepid's not gonna die. Oh, come on, come on. Sang's taking fire. Kabej taking fire. Man, lots of Kabej taking fire, actually, because their defense is lower than all of the other ships here. Actually, the S2s will be targeted before Kabej, but... Oh, there we go. Warp Core is going to lose an Intrepid to this swarm of monsoons, and he might lose another one. The thing is, that warp in gives incredible power in a good location, but it's slow. Whereas all these S2s and all these monsoons are really, really fast. Oh, and this may have been a, a misclick. Decloaking this Kabej. It needs to cloak. It's about to get raped by all these monsoons. That was fun to watch. Now Warp Core is getting his Starfleet Command. So overall, I would say that that was... Uh, okay. I would say that as a raid, that was a failure for the top team. However, since two of them are feds, that's sort of how they play. All they really needed to do was keep the pressure off of themselves while they're mining this whole time and get their Starfleet command up, get new ships. So, it was... The, the top team lost the battle, but it wasn't a battle they needed to win, if that makes sense. Here we see... Wow! Spretz is really forward platforming. Which is... This is actually going to give them quite an interesting position. Because there aren't an excessive amount of blockage on this map, but there is a lot. And there, it is a series of, uh, you know, choke points between the two sides. So if they really keep on turreting up every single location, like I say, they don't really need to su succeed in their raids because they can cordon off this entire top half of the map. We'll see how well that does. Because down here... Tempest is going to be free to go raid, but like I say, he doesn't do the raiding, he does the fleet thing. In fact, I think he may have gotten compound torpedoes. Oh, not yet. But he's getting his Vorcha out, so he's really going to look to support the fleet. Here come these S2s. Oh, this is an ill-advised attack. Beef did not expect to find this here, but since he has, he needs to run. He needs to get out. And he knows it. These S2s are incredibly good turret breakers, but not when there's a fleet there. Oh, wow. Where is everybody shooting? Oh, okay, now Arshea is raiding. Very successfully. We have... Okay, this fed got repelled. There should be another warpin coming somewhere. Where'd that warpin get called? Oh, here we go. Okay, so... Um, Spretz has got a very nice fleet. Arshea needs to pull back now. I think he knows it. He's gonna get out. Oh, that was beautiful. You see, that's that's a real raid. That's a raid with raiding ships. He only killed two miners, I think. Maybe one or two intrepids. But now... Oh, this is gonna be interesting. We have all our cloaked Klingons. Oh, that sucks that that auto-targeted that. And now we see the Tempest has not been idle. He just builds tons of stuff. These top team are near a yard, but remember, they enter the yard on the top side. So it's going to be difficult for them fighting below the yard. Always remember, it's the top of the yard that counts, not the bottom. Oh, there it goes, there it goes. Oh, this Quebec get it, gets in. That Quebec cloaks out. This Intrepid, and this is, now this is looking bad. Now they need to get out. Arshea needs to run so the Tempest can cloak. Let's see, where is Beef in all this? Beef is going to get some good raids, but these guys are in trouble. And yeah, Tempest is cloaking out. Arshea can run, but he's going to lose some monsoons. 
Fortunately for him, monsoons don't really cost any money. So, I still can't say that either side has gotten a major advantage here. These guys are going to kill this really fast. And maybe the other one too. They're certainly going to kill this mining. And this is exactly what Beef needs to be doing. It's, it's kind of funny to see the Dominion playing a raiding. The Dominion and Feds are playing raiding while the Klingons play uh, defensive. Defensive fleets. Oh, these Sangs got pinged, that's bad. But I don't think they're going to die. And now it's time to run, time to run. Run away, Beef, run away. And yep, decommission. Oh, bad call. Warp Core should not have decommissioned that. It's just one of those small psychological things. If he had left it undecommissioned, then Beef might have stayed around for the ambush. But it's the tiny things that you just have to learn through experience. So, Beef could get a good raid here. Um, as we see, Warp Core has upgraded to chassis level 2. He's going Akira's, which, as Risner, have very good attack. So he's going to be building a roll. Beef is going to get some raiding in, which... Oh, he's going to get some good raiding in. These people thought he would run. But he didn't run. So this is very much a battle for position. The bottom teams just have faster ships, and they're outmaneuvering the top team. But if it comes down to it, the top team have the firepower to win. In a, in a you know, knockdown, dragout fight. So... Oh, this is going to be very risky for Beef. He's playing a dangerous game here. <laughs> this is all about intuition. He has to use the force to tell where the enemy cloaked ships are. No, no! They're right there. Yep, run away, run away. And what really needs to happen here... How is he doing? Is he just double yarding? Okay, Beef does have a fair number of ships. He's got his supply mining up and everything. And he can start he can start giving supplies to uh, other players. Oh wow, Tempest is taking this out. So it seems like the strategy of the top team may be backfiring, or just not working, because they tried to control so much territory. They just couldn't hold out. Oh, Beef's going to get a nice galaxy kill here, because this bottom team is just constantly keeping up the pressure. Top team don't have a second to think or relax. Boom. They are coming down here. They're hitting Arshea again. Arshea hasn't fully. Oh, okay, never mind. Arshea doesn't need that tritanium at all. So these guys are going to get some damage, but it's all going to die. They must understand that. Tempest can come back here. And Arshea. Arshea's monsoon thing. Okay, I really want to see you get Proxy Torp here and just insta-kill a galaxy or something. Because galaxies take extra damage from short range, remember. It's 24%, I think, extra damage from short range. Oh, that Monsoon, a bit ahead of the pack. He's going to get killed unless he pulls back right now. Oh, here we go! Oh, it's just going to be a massacre. All these fast ships, you can't escape them. You need to get back here, back to your turrets, come on. There's the yard. Oh, these are warp ins, they don't cost money, they only cost supply. But they are all gonna die. Not even S2 death. Not even S2 gets killed in exchange. What do we have over here? Yeah, these guys are harassing here. Wow. And yeah, engines on that galaxy. These guys go straight through the Klingons. And now these three fleets are united. I think it's time for the top team maybe to do some warp in harassment or something. Like, just warp in straight to back here and kill some miners. They need to use their flexibility because they're not winning the fleet fights. And they're not winning the harassment fights. Actually, no, what they need to do right now is get some AoE attacks. Which, what do they have? The Klingons need to, like, fast tech to Bortus or something. Or the Feds could try for Phalanx. They're, they need a ridiculous AoE 
attack that's going to turn the balance of this entire game. Otherwise, they basically lost. This yard gets shredded. Oh, it's so pretty. These fed ships, they're organized, but they're not organized enough. They just lost their yard, their positioning, they're out of position. Lots of stuff firing. And the top team are not just sitting and taking it either. They are building a ton of stuff. They are trying to respond here. Oh, but... Spretz doesn't even have a yard at his base. Because he's been aggressively expanding so much. So this is the only safe place he has. And is not safe. Oh, beautiful. S2s, they get their little pulse. And then their vet ability is the Torpedo Disable. Wow. Oh crap. Oh wow. Oh, here's something. The only player from the top who didn't just lose his base, or his fleet, is uh, the Tiger. He's got some pretty heavy production here. But he just doesn't have enough ships. Oh, this is... yeah, he's not going to be able to do this. That's what they need! They need some polar on field. They need some sort of mass disable. Man, I'm having trouble keeping track with all the fleets. Who's... okay, these guys are attacking here. Ooh, veteran. No, not veteran. Close. to the ridiculous base killer. Hang on! That would be a defiant. I see, so that... that... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good call or not. So it looks like Warp Cord has just decided to fast tech. Which, uh, like I say, I think Phalanx would have been better. Or just more ships, because that's he's lost the numbers advantage. This thing is getting ripped to shreds. It did do some nice damage, but... And ironically, the Monsoons and S2 do nothing to this. But the Klingon ships can kill it. There goes a Monsoon. Up here, wow. Tiger is really hurting for supply. I think the top team have just been so harassed, they've been running around in circles and they haven't had time to keep track of their shipbuilding, so they've gotten a bit behind. This pulse platform won't take any damage from these S2, but the other ones and the phaser platform especially will die. S2 are so weird. They're the early game that is good against everything late game. Like this E2 they can kill, these platforms they can kill. They're fast, they have pitiful hit points, but it doesn't matter at this point, because the enemy fleets were decimated by his allies. So we really did see a perfect matchup here. Uh, the Tiger is really trying to push his ships with these damage specials. But Tempest is just so good at keeping his fleet alive. Okay, so here they have actually... Oh, okay. Now the Defiants get to do their thing. Defiants are just going to annihilate these S2s. They take reduced damage from the S2, and they deal extra damage to the S2. So as long as he doesn't fight anything else... Actually, now that I think about it, these, these things are pretty good. Because they'll counter the S2s, and they'll counter... Oh, <laughs> T-15s will counter Defiance, though. But they'll counter the small ships of the Klingons. Maybe? I don't know. I want to say maybe he should have gone Sovereign or Phalanx, though, because that would have been an even more powerful counter against some short range. But it wouldn't have done the damage. Oh, it hung up! No! So bad! You do not want to lose a single Defiant. Oh, it died, though. So sad. If these had come up a bit sooner... Maybe if the top team had, like, combined their resources a bit. Because you can see from the resources they have, 
like what they kind of need to do is just have warp core build three erati yards and pump defiance from triple yard defiance basically because he could do it if the other people were giving him the resources i think that's the answer right now because here we've got some nice e2s okay avalon's coming out here which is also really supply intensive um, the tiger is finally going to battle yard so it is impressive it's a testament to how well they expanded early on to how well they're doing now it's taking the bottom team a long time to wear them down and press their advantage but without a significant AOE or high-tech attack right now from the top team that said dang that's a lot of ships how do the feds get so many ships <laughs> oh don't worry I have enough to talk about I'll always find more things to talk about it seems that beef has gone up to the t15 and he really hasn't done much else but like I say the, the bottom team have been so focused on their micro I wonder if beef is giving supply to these other guys he should be he could be in fact well oh, oh I was about to say it's about time for them to expand but they are they are pushing forward which just makes you wonder, you know, how do they have the time? How do they have the mental focus to control all these ships and, you know, keep on building new structures? It's really just an efficiency thing. And then there's Tempest. You know, Tempest has been filling in the gaps whenever his allies left something behind. He hasn't even expanded over here, except for one Tritanium. Huh. Oh, because he had a Dilithium here, but he never got that Tritanium. He's going to go, I don't know, something. But you can see, he hasn't actually, you know, expanded hardly at all. He's just been constantly, constantly making sure that the pressure was never let up. So we could see Lispet, or we could see Imperial Yard, or Bortos. I don't, I don't entirely know why he'd have that there. But I think this is the point where the bottom team, they could keep on building ships, or they could do that one master stroke, that one ship that just comes out and the enemy team is like, oh, you know, like if one of the, the fed players built Defiance, or like if Beef just made a mixed tech Dreadnought or something, the kind of thing that makes the enemy team just look at that and just be like, really? I guess we're going to die now and give up. Because otherwise, like I say, it'll take them a very long time to press their advantage. And this, this is interesting. I think Tempest has actually underestimated uh, Tiger a bit. He is losing ships fighting here. He is killing stuff as well. But with this, with this scanner platform, okay, yeah, Tiger or Tempest is pulling back. And over here, massive, massive S2 monsoon battle. That Avalon, wow! Did you see that Avalon go down? Holy crap. They've like synchronized their firing. So one volley from these ships is just like shields. Two volleys is everything else. So this this Akira. I'm thinking, oh, I wonder, can your can Akira's can their, you know, advanced shuttle base take over fighters from friendlies? I don't know. Because I think those... Oh, maybe that was just the other Avalon. But I felt like I saw the, the fighters get picked up by something else when that Avalon died. And that is bad, because uh, the Avalons, the one thing they really, really take is supply, and the top team doesn't have supply. Not to mention their long range, and the entire Monsoon S2 fleet counters long range. So this is... This is almost the effect of the uh, Defiant here, you know, he counters long range, he counters short range. They're countered either way. But, eh, top team's not giving up, they're still warping stuff in. <laughs> warp Core's about to get another warp in. How, do they, how are they looking for specials? These guys don't have theirs. Oh, these guys should get their critical shot. It's nice. Uh, Avalons don't get a special. Or it's just an upgrade. Now that I think about it, Tempest has lost all of his Sangs. Because I guess Sangs get targeted before Intrepids are... Wait. Sangs have 20. 
Wow, that's funny. A Sang will be targeted before a mons before a Mason Monsoon. Because the defense on the Monsoon is higher. Ah, <laughs> Torpedo Turret. I saw it coming, it's just, ah ha ha, it's so cute. It does extra damage to medium, less damage, takes less damage from short. So it's actually really good against these guys. Turret melts. Dead, 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 dead. Dead Ambassador. Dead something. Dead Sensor Nebula. Dead Monsoon. I'm seeing dead us too. Phalanx! Sweet a Phalanx! I'm so proud. And it has the... Oh, activate the special, activate the special. All it does is reduce the duration of this weapon, so it should always be on. There we go. No, no, fire the S2s, the S2s. <laughs> These guys are just chilling out in the back row. Death! Massive amounts of death. Veteran S2. Dying Sensor Nebula. Dying Akira. That one's gonna live. Oh, Veteran S2. So pretty. This one shuts down weapons with torpedoes. Like, if it has torpedoes, it'll shut down its weapons, which means it can disable that turret. Accidentally firing on an ally. Oh no, fighters, fighters. Wow. So, I think there is no way around it. The top team took some pretty heavy losses there. But they did do pretty well, considering. They did kill quite a lot of the smaller stuff. I mean, there's so many monsoons and S2s here. Almost every single S2 died. And these T-15s, I wouldn't even bother with T-15s at this point. I would switch it up for C-17s, because they get the reduced enemy firepower by 50% that only works on three targets. So you can have like 10 C-17s, and it will still be effective against the entire, like, it'll take 10 S, it'll take 10 ships to affect the entire enemy fleet, is what I'm saying. It looks like some S-2s have been given to uh, Tempest to bolster his fleet. And he is... Oh, that's interesting. I guess these guys will tank for his Vorchas. They also... Oh, oh, I see. These are deadly against the other Klingons because they, they act as cloak detect. They have manual targeting and they multi-target, which means these guys will not be able to cloak out. Ooh, veteran Kabej. So the Tiger has really not teched up or anything. He's just pumping Kabej out of as many yards as he possibly can. He still has tons of Tritanium. Now this is when it's actually a good idea to start upgrading. But I wouldn't actually upgrade as... If I was Tiger, I wouldn't upgrade. I would give it to these... Okay, never mind. The entire top team has massive surpluses of Tritanium. So they should be upgrading their ship, like defenses and weapons. We now have a fair amount of Avalons. Show me the Phalanx. I want to see Phalanx. Phalanx. Phalanx, yeah. It's going to take a lot of these before they start to really make a difference. But honestly, it doesn't hurt. I mean, you got... Oh, I, don't... I wonder what the damage is on that. But AoE damage... You know, when these, when these ships here start attacking, the Dominion ships will spread out more. But when these ones start attacking, they all sit in one spot. And the AoE attack from this Phalanx will hit, like, 15 ships. It's amazing. So these guys are engaged in their own little pissing contest over here. How's the bottom team doing for resources? They're also pretty heavy on the try. Except for Tempest. Tempest has probably been getting upgrades. I know he likes to do that. He bought supply. Come on, Beef, you should be sharing supply. And, oh man. I can barely tell these yellow and white units apart on the minimap. This is where the top team really needs to be scouting. Although it's just one of those things. One more thing to think about. Time to upgrade the starbase, dude. <laughs> Defensively, at least. Now this could be good if these guys go right now. Go, 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 go. Fight, win. Before everything dies, catch them on the way back. Now there's something interesting I just thought about. 
If this starbase upgrades, it will have torpedo weapons, and if it has torpedo weapons, that veteran S2 will shut down its weapons. I wonder if that works. Oh, but it looks like he doesn't have the money to upgrade it anyway, so we won't get to see. Sorry, I'm trying not to look at it too much, because I might mess up their micro. I don't want to mess this up for them. Oh, are they going to push on the base instead? I don't know what they're doing. Phalanx. Here we go! Here we go! Oh, it's going to be amazing! Oh, it's going to be so cool. These guys, if they had sovereigns, they could disable the engines on this fleet. Or on, like, half of this fleet, so not all of them get home. This Akira just melts. Everything just melts. Something dies. The phalanx are firing. Oh, Alpha Ketra saw white. Oh, he hit all of them. Fortunately, it doesn't seem to have hurt his crew that badly. How about the monsoons, though? Okay, the monsoons are good. And a descent, just cuz. Come join the battle, descent. Oh, that phalanx dies. Yeah, there's just too much firepower. They died with honor. They really did. They're getting overwhelmed now. <laughs> Veteran Intrepid. Veteran Intrepids are actually a beast. They can kill miners on their own. Oh, don't run away! Ouch. 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 And those phalanx were not cheap. Still, everybody has tons of tritanium. So I'm going to go back to what I said before. Hand it all to Tiger and have him build Bortus. Oh wait, it's still going. It's still on. Turret just gets gawomped. Yes, that is a verb. Corey needs to bring back his defiance. I know they're going to die, but you need to send them anyway to help your friend. It's better to die together than to die apart. We must all hang together, or else we shall all surely hang separately. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, what happened? I know these guys fought, and it looks like Tiger lost a lot, and maybe Tempest lost some too. Oh, there it is. Puller on field, puller on field. Ooh. 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 Can't even click on these guys fast enough. No, stay back, stay back! Got it. Go, go, go! Physics blocking! Dead. That's brutal. That is really brutal right there. <laughs> Shield recharge. Not the perfect timing on that one. <laughs> Dead. Uh oh, what's going on? The yard! The yard is bugged! No! Bad things. Well, that cost the descent. It would have died anyway, but that's kind of sad to see that happen. This dude has his torpedoes now. Yeah, seriously, critical shot. It wouldn't cost you anything because you have more money than you can possibly spend. At least titanium-wise. So, they're still fighting, in case you haven't noticed. Tempest over here. Still getting <laughs> concussion missile launchers. I don't, I don't know how that works. Never really used it. Oh, oh so it's just an AoE attack. Or no, a certain number of targets, so maybe it's like the multi-targeting disruptor of the Disrean. Or actually pretty similar to the, the Sang special. 
So I'm suspecting here that this fleet of Tempest is completely upgraded. Whereas these, I don't know, because they have tons of Tritanium. I'm going to start checking these guys' engineering just to see if they're realizing that and upgrading. Nope. Armory? Ordnance Depot. Ah! <laughs> improved engines. Does... Tempest have that? <laughs> oh, that's right, he's getting that. Meanwhile, Arshea is going for Izirati. I haven't seen what Arshea has been building, but I guess there were a lot of Intrepids mist mixed in there that didn't used to be in there. Let me see. He never did get Proxy Torp, which at this point it wouldn't make <laughs> as much of a difference. Sorry, I just sneeze there. So, I guess Arshea has been losing a lot of little ships, and he's just building more, because they're the front runners for these other ones. Ooh, exciting. Wait, what? Where did it happen? What is going on? Where is this happening? Seriously. Oh, there it is. Okay. Stupid camouflage units that camouflage with the ice fields. And then Tempest is like, oh hey, you mean you're not home? I'll just kill your base then. So yeah, Arshea's mining is gonna, gonna die again. But at this point, Tiger doesn't really care. I love the sound of those concussion, of those photon racks. Like, Q -Q. These guys are moving back. Oh, hey! Only one group is attacking here. Oh, but they can't do anything. They have plates, so Defiance won't do anything to them. This is an opportunity since the speed is split up, but they move so fast. Let's see, that's gonna die. That's also gonna die. So you see these guys, they do multi-target. I don't know exactly how it works, but I know they end up shooting at different people. Oh! <laughs> oh, that is cool. Tiger just captured this battle yard, so he can use that to repair. I mean, he can go raiding as much as he likes. Although he better get through repair now, because all of these ships are low crew. Oh no! No, bad! Very bad. Repair your dudes, repair your dudes! Oh. Well, he's gonna die. All of these ships are going to die, because they have, like... I think it cuts down your rate of fire to, like, half when you have low crew. So, uh, he might just cloak and run, actually. No! That's even worse! No! No, he's repair lining! Oh, bad. It takes a long... Okay. Sorry. I'm done talking. Tiger's running. Cloak and run. He's gonna get away. But that is gonna be hard, because he has to recrew this. And Tempest isn't gonna let him. Over here we have... Various Defiance. Shredding this. Yeah, that's the other thing. T-15s. Once you get ranked T-15s, they have an AoE attack. The S-2s are gonna die. Wow, forward firing weapons. Let's watch the Avalon. Ooh, that was a Rigel, I think. Maybe not. You're dead. Maybe? Maybe? No? Yeah, this is block. He's gonna die. Oh, nice. You're still low crew, though. All of your ships are low crew. Heavy Disruptor. 
I love that, they just like one volley. <laughs> one volley, two volleys. Thunk. Three volleys. And Arshea comes in. These guys, their pulse weapons aren't going to do much. Are you still building these? You can build these for the rest of the game. Oh, there we go. Dying here, dying here. It's got a lot of hit points on it. Very long. And yeah, so at this point there's nothing left to be said. I'm just gonna sign off and record the rest without talking. So this has been really fun. Hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I did. You can see how the smaller ships, they just the fact that they move faster allowed them to maneuver on such a big map. On a big map, you gotta really watch out because the slower ships, the farther you have to travel, the easier it is for the faster ships to just go around you and ignore you. So yeah, and then we'll see if people join me for commentary. So this is Triptic signing up. or joined your channel. Well, that was certainly messy. <laughs> so what did you think? Well, I think that you uh, broke the number one rule when it comes to dealing with Dominion. Don't, <laughs> do not let him grow under any circumstances. Yeah, it was really something. I think it must have just been because you guys had faster ships than them. It was too dangerous for them to come raid your homes. Yeah, but to be honest, I was uh, getting a little tight. One sec, one service. sec. Pretty explosions. Everybody just left at once. Okay, sorry, what were you saying? Yes, well, I got pretty frightened uh, with those Defiance. When I saw him building Defiance, I became obsessed with killing at least one of his big shipyards. Yeah, and then, yeah, because they just shut down the Monsoons and the Intrepids and the S2s. I was Which saying, though, was... somebody needed to get area of effect weapons like Bortus with Ion Storm or Polar on Field or something. Yeah, but. He Hyperspace could... Artillery. <laughs> yeah, uh, he was busy, the Klingon. Uh, he was busy with the other Klingon, you know, so uh, it, uh, our battle here on the left side just got out of control. Yeah, that was that was a long game. That was a really good game, though. <laughs> I don't think anybody else is coming for commentary. So I'm going to sign it off now, but yeah, that's going to be fun for you guys to watch later. And I'm hoping yeah. that my audio settings made it so that you can hear my voice. User joined your channel. Wait, yeah. there's another. What's up? <laughs> hey, how's it going? Who is this? Tiger. Hey, so how'd you like that game? Ah, oh, fuck, man. I was I had to go AFK a few times in the game, especially a couple of times where I didn't have to pause a game. My kids woke up. I couldn't enjoy it. <laughs> Ah, you really had your work cut out for you going against Tempest there. Yeah, I thought I handled pretty well. I, if I didn't have to go away, I could have kept my fleet mobile and kept on putting pressure on them. But you, you saw my fleet was sitting in my base for half the game. Right. Well, you had a lot of cabbage. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just learning Klingon at the moment. And I thought cabbage was a good standard way to go. 
It was. I was just thinking, you know, some Bortas would have been nice. Or anything AOE that could have... I was taken up. Like I said, I had to leave and I came back. It was too late. Right. Right. I improved my weapons, I improved the engine, etc. I was going to go for Negvars. <laughs> okay, well I'm going to see if they want to do another game then. There's a game up, uh, 4v4 at the moment. Cool. Well, then this is Triptych signing off.